Hey, it's Nova Scotia Thomas here again. So this now for this video, we're going to talk about 11 things you did not know about Nova Scotia. So number 11. Every year, we do, Nova Scotia donates a Christmas tree to the city of Boston. Um, uh, that's that, that's in, in, in gratitude for when the Halifax explosion took place. If you don't know what that is, look it up. We used to, it was the uh, largest man-made explosion. Uh, prior to the atomic bomb, and um, it really devastated Halifax. So when the people of Boston found out what had happened, they did not even ask what we needed. They just sent stuff right away. Uh, and so because of that, we send a Christmas. They get a free Christmas tree every year to this day. Uh, number ten. Um, so you know how people talk about steak and lobster being all this rich and fancy food. Uh, back in the day in Nova Scotia, it used to be the poor man's food. I've, I've actually heard stories of people telling me how they, when they were growing up, they were embarrassed eating lobster every single day because it was a sign of great poverty in Nova Scotia. Um, no, no, number nine, different towns have different weather systems in Nova Scotia. So I lived in, in the town I live in, I have looked at other places, uh, bright sunny day here, a few towns over, you may have flooding. And hail, or a massive thunderstorm, or sm smoke from uh, out in BC from a forest fire or something. And sometimes, even depending on the size of the town, you could have, even in small towns, you can have different weather patterns in different parts of the town. Um, so yeah, Nova Scotian weather is unpredictable and varies greatly, uh, even from town to town. Uh, num number, number eight. We used to be super rich. Nova Scotia right now is considered one of the poorest provinces in Canada. This wasn't always the case. Uh, we used to be the ma a major sipping center for British North America and now Canada. Uh, as a result, all the goods had to come through here. All the ships had to be made here, especially in the age of sail. So if you look around some pla around, around Nova Scotia, you'll see all these old mansions uh, from when we were well off. And you can today. So today, you can be a poor person, comparatively poor person, living in an apartment in a Victorian mansion now. Uh, uh, and I'm not joking. Um, so yeah, we used to be super rich out here. Not so much anymore, unfortunately. Um, no, no, number seven. Uh, if you've ever heard of Lords in France, where there's a healing spring there that the Virgin Mary appeared at, and and healings took place there. Well, guess what? We have one of those in Nova Scotia. Up near Antigonish in the monastery there, uh, there's a holy sp there's a holy spring. The story goes that a monk was felling a tree, and the tree fell on top of him, and he and he broke his leg. So he invoked the Virgin Mary for help, and a spring appeared, and and, and a spring appeared, and uh, and the monks were able to follow the spring back to where he was. They put water on him, and he recovered. And it has been approved ecclesiastically, which is not always the easiest thing to get, especially in those days. It's actually historically the Catholic Church is quite skeptical about skeptical about those sort of things. And so to this day you can walk right in. It's actually a very quiet place for prayer. You can pray undisturbed for hours and uh, not be bothered by anyone. So look, if you ever visit Nova Scotia, look that place up. Um, number six. Uh, there is a, I would say there is a, a common Nova Scotian identity, but we do have more than one culture here. And I'm not just talking about from town to town customs, I mean like entire cultures. Like, uh, so we have the Mi'kmaq, First Nation people, who are certainly a unique culture, even from other First Nation people. Uh, we have um, uh, the planter loyalist culture, English cult, Canadian culture, which is mine, uh, which is my, which is mine. We have the... Uh, we have the Acadians. So, so hey, everyone from Louisiana, you you guys from here, and we still speak French, and they're along, especially the south shore of Nova Scotia near Yarmouth and Matagan. And um, and we actually have some uh, people of German German descent near Lunenburg. They don't I don't think it's, they don't really speak German anymore, uh, but there is like a but there are quite a few Lutheran churches around around that way. So but but so but even but right around there like. Um, but even around there, people and oh, even then, people are. I spoke with some people. They they pretty assimilate pretty well with the English culture. Also, we have last but not least the Gaelic Scots culture, especially 
up near Antigonish and picked away and uh, in Cape Breton. Um, very strong Celtic influence up there, culture, and it has a ma had a major. And they even have the Highland Highland Games uh, outside of the Highlands when there are no Highlands around. So uh, yes, yeah, so we have a number of cultures in Nova Scotia. Um, number five, you like this one, especially if you come from like Asia or anything like that. Um, there are no poisonous or venomous snakes or spiders native to Nova Scotia. Uh, now, all snakes have venom, but not enough to around here. The only ones around here that are enough, that have enough to kill humans are in a zoo, frankly. Uh, so, like, if you see a snake on, on the ground, don't bother it and you'll be fine. And even if it does bite you, you'll... I've never been bitten by a snake, and I, but I've seen snakes, but they, do, they tend not to bother you, bother you. Humans can deal with them, no problem. Um... And they're not poison. It's even if you do get bitten. I'd see a doctor still. It wouldn't be fun, but... Yeah. You'll not really have to worry about that. About snakes. Poison snakes or spiders around here. Number four. I mentioned this before in my other video. We have the strongest types in the world here. And I mean strong and powerful. And I mean very high. Um, you can, like, I think I think it's like a mile that can go out. And a mile will come back in. And it can be very comparatively quick and very powerful. And they can move... Major ship boats. I don't mean like canoes or kayaks. I mean like major tankers in some in some areas. So we have the most powerful tides in the world here. Uh, we've actually tried to harness them for energy. Uh, we put in turbines in the ocean, and the turbines break because of how strong the tides are. So we they literally not found a way to harvest to harness the the power of the power of the tides in Nova Scotia because they're so strong. Um, strong. Number three, we were the first place in the British Empire to get democracy. So um, under Joseph Howe, he was a major campaigner for democracy in Nova Scotia, and he got res responsible, i.e. elected by the people government. First place in the British Empire to get that. Um, uh, he, would no he, uh, he had no problem with us being under the British Empire. And actually, I'll go, on, go on later, he actually campaigned against us becoming part of Canada later on, which he didn't really succeed in, but you'll be surprised how close he came. So yeah, um, Joseph, how look him up? We were the first place in the British Empire to get democracy and to have like freedom of the press in the British Empire. Number two, we almost became the fourteenth state. We almost became Americans. Um, the, the it, there's been a lot of speculation as to why we didn't. Uh, we were. Was us, us us in Newfoundland who were like the only colonies on the British colonies on the East Coast who didn't want to join up? It's been suggested. I've heard things suggested from like strong military presence by the British in Halifax. Halifax is like the premier defense location, and even during the War of eighteen twelve, Halifax was never invaded uh, by the by by the Americans. It was just considered suicide. I've also heard suggested that we. We're just so small, there was really no point. Um, uh, we did have strong ties with New England uh, prior to that. Actually, um, people in the Annapolis Valley of Nova Scotia, I've heard, um, would actually visit New England more often than they would visit Halifax because they were able, it was easier to sail there. They'd go down there, get their education, come back, and it was um, we had closer ties with New England than even Halifax uh, when Nova Scotia first got started as a British colony. Number one, uh, remember Joseph Howe? Yeah, we almost became our own country. Um, there was like there was at, at times of confederate when confederation was taking place for Canada. Uh, Nova Scotia was in talks with the um, other maritime provinces about forming its own union, as opposed to say Canada with Canada and Quebec. And uh, Joseph Howe, who was a, like a major Nova Scotian hero. If you know your Nova Scotian history, anyway, um, campaigned against us joining Canada. He wanted us to be our own thing, but uh, through various arguments, i.e., bribery, uh, the the British got major Canadian Nova Scotian politicians on board to have us join Canada rather than become our own thing. So that's why we are part of Canada today, um, rather than our own country. Uh, I have met actually Nova Scotian separatists. Or actually, more like separatists. I've only known one. There's really no major separatist 
movement in Nova Scotia. We all we're all Canadian, Canadian. Even if those of us who are Nova Scotian first, there's no desire to be or independent an independent country on the part of Nova Scotia. Although there was uh, for short period after Confederation, we, uh, we actually had a separatist movement before in Nova Scotia, in Nova Scotia before even Quebec did. So yeah, so that's um, eleven things you did not know about Nova Scotia. Anyway, uh, hope you liked the video. Stay safe, everyone.